Coming up, 300 to 2, the true story of Mr. Quentin Clark, right here on Matters of the Heart. Stay tuned. Hi, my name is Tim Board, the host of the local radio program, Front Range Radio. You are listening to JBCM Radio, inspiring you to embrace your creativity. Check us out on the web at jbcmradio.com. It's so easy to say I love you, but somehow your affection sends me on an international pilgrimage of love, a journey that allows me to love you in Swahili, Ilovium, French, Je t'aime, Spanish, Te amo, German, Ich liebe dich, Italian, Te amo, Swedish, Ja eskate, Russian, Ja lublu tebia, Chinese, Wu ani, Irish, and oh yes, Greek. Thank you all so much for tuning in to Matters of the Heart. I am your host, John Redmond, and what a phenomenal guest and an incredible show we have for you guys today. Now, I know I say that on all the shows, but this one, you all will definitely agree with me. Mr. Quentin Clark, can you say hello to our Matters of the Heart listening family, Quentin? Hello. Really? That's really all you're going to say? Okay. okay. What am I supposed to say? He was just like, hello. Now, what you know, you're, do you say? greeting everybody like that? You make me sick. Anyway, I have a feeling this is going to be one of those shows that will be unforgettable, as Nat King Cole says, in every way. And forevermore. Oh <laughs> y'all don't want me to sing, y'all. Here's my no, y'all favorite. don't. No, y'all don't. <laughs> Quentin is affectionately known as just Q, so you all will hear me just referring to him throughout the this interview as Q sometimes. So, Q, we've been friends for how long? Has it been like 10 years? Oh, my goodness. I think 11 years. It hit just passed. 11 just passed um, last month. I think 11 years too long. No, I'm just Shut up. Like, Right, see? see, this is why you can't invite your friends on the radio show. And then was, I'm sure you're going to call me out in, in some way. Anyway, so I, I, I think I saw you. I think we met at 24 Hour Fitness. We did. And um, I think you were teaching in that electrifying, high energy Q style that only you can provide, that you only give. And I was like, who is that? Baby, you were matching from head to toe. Yeah, I had a. I had a thing with matching everything from the sweatband on my head to the laces <laughs> in my shoes. I was a young little whippersnapper. I had had five years behind my belt at that time. Um, and you couldn't tell me nothing. I was I felt like I was in my prime. The little that I know, I was nowhere close to my prime. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Well, I know this. Anyone who has ever gone anywhere with you knows that this is true. You are a star. Oh, yes, you are. Everybody knows and adores you. I remember we were having a going away dinner um, for one of our mutual friends at a restaurant. And you happened to check in on Facebook that you were having dinner at that exact same restaurant at that time. There was a scream heard from across the room, across the restaurant. And about three or four women came running around the restaurant looking for Q, saying, there he is. We've spotted him. (laughs) Y'all know this happens everywhere he goes, no matter where he goes. I've experienced that. I've seen that for over 10 years, almost 11 years. No joke. You know, it's funny you bring that up. uh, Thank you for saying that I'm a star. Um, I don't consider myself one. Um, but I am loved and very fortunate and very blessed to have the following that I have within the fitness industry um, and all the love that everyone gives me. Um, but it's interesting that you say that because it just happened to us when we went to go get pedicures. <laughs> that is so funny. To the share. <laughs> and they ran up, you know, and I, it it does nothing but give me the reassurance 
that I'm doing what God has placed me on this earth to do, and that is to share the gift of, of being happy with you, being a fit you, and just being a healthy you. Um, and it just reassures me when stuff like that happens. Um, some people say, oh, you know, it, it, his head's going to explode. It, not a true story. Anybody that truthfully knows me knows that. It, it's very humbling to me, and, and I'm very grateful and fortunate. Q is this fun-loving, fit model who commands any room wherever he goes without even speaking one word. But it hasn't always been like that for you, Q, has it? Um, no, it hasn't. You know, I, I ate whatever I wanted and I wasn't as active. And also, I think there was a bit of depression. I was very sad. Um, what had to be fixed. Hey friends, this is John Redman, and guess what? Matters of the Heart Radio Show is now on Facebook. Yes, post your comments, share your pictures, like us, or even contact us, because you know what? We want to hear what you have to say. kid I loved dancing all of there was telling me Q go sit down somewhere go sit down I was always dancing around the house and my brother hated it he always used to tell me how stupid I was and I, I didn't care I just felt this connection with beats and I, I just loved I mean any genre of music I grew up on a farm um, helping my grandparents farm driving a tractor with AM radio and I, I would get it to the AM country mm -hmm. station all genres you know I just love music. I love being happy. I love dancing. The endorphins that just release in you. You know, it just allows you to, to stop thinking about your day-to-day -day life. Um, stuff that goes on in your life, regardless of what that may be. Um, so, I was young and loved dancing around. I took gymnastics, to ballet, jazz. I did all of that. Um, and unfortunately... Some circumstances happened in my life, um, but it made an impact on me. And unfortunately, um, and fortunately, <laughs> um, I had to go stay with my grandma and I um, quit sports. Um, and, you know, grandmas love their kids, their grandkids. And so, you know, I, I ate whatever I wanted and I wasn't as active. And also, I think there was a bit of depression. I was very sad um, on what had taken place in my life. Um, but like I said, fortunately, my grandma was there for me, and she's a very special person that I hold so dear to this day. Um, took me in and, you know, um, helped along with my father um, and stuff and mm -hmm. my aunts. And, you know, the, and the, a lot of people have impacted my life. But in long story short, um, I gained a bunch of weight. Um, and by the time I was a sophomore... In high school, I had maxed out at, peaked, I guess, at 300 pounds. 300 pounds? Yeah. Can't even imagine that. And I had a size 44-inch waist. Um, and it's weird because I was always so active, so outgoing. Like, I, I'm just full of life. And I, yes. I think my personality outshined my weight, mm. um, which was part of it. And I think part of it, too, I was tall. So you can hide things in places when you're tall versus being short. Very true. Um, so I was very compact. But I didn't realize I had gained that much weight. Nobody ever told me um, that I had gained uh, uh, you know, that much weight. Although when I was gaining weight, um, when I was younger and I was starting to put it on, I was teased a lot um, by family members too, um, which really hurt my feelings. Um, but... I had taken this class um, at the YMCA, our local YMCA, with a friend of mine mm -hmm. um, at 5.30 in the morning before we went to school. And I thought, oh, God, what is she getting me into? I just couldn't believe it. And I went, and it was this kickboxing class with a lady named Kelly Jo Ledesma, who worse can never come out right or be expressed the amount of gratitude and love 
that I have and respect, I guess, that I have for this woman. Mm. Um, sh- I would stand in front of a section that didn't even have a mirror. I, I didn't want to see myself in the mirror. Um, you know, when you're, when you're obese and you're overweight, things that you don't think of that would bother a heavy person, you don't even think of when you're fit. Um, for instance, when I would jump up and down, it was like I had man boobs and they would bounce and I didn't want to see it. Um, and you know, it, it's, again, I, I didn't realize that I was, I had become so shelled because of my weight. Interesting. Um, I look back at it now and I see it. Um, but I started taking this kickboxing class um, with a fellow um, a fellow friend of mine that was in the same grade. And um, I felt like I was dancing again. I felt like I was a kid again before the, the trauma that happened in my life happened. Interesting. And it took me back to that happy place. Mm. And I just instantly fell in love and... And I, I know it sounds weird, but it made me feel like I was dancing again in this kickboxing class. And it, it made me a different person. I was a lot happier during the day. Um, even my friend, she pointed it out. She was like, Q, when you don't go to kickboxing class, you're a bear. But when you go, the next day, you're, you know, it's like you're, you're so happy. Interesting. And I'm like, I know, but I'm tired. I'm working all these jobs, trying to go to school. You know, it was a lot. It was a lot. But I thank her for telling me that because it made me look at myself. Mm-hmm. And so I continued to go to these classes my junior year of high school. And then my senior year, I decided I was going to give up pop. I don't know what sparked it, but I was like, I'm done with the soda. I think, honestly, it's because I was regurgitating, <laughs> burping when I was working out. And oh, okay. I didn't like the feeling. I, I don't know. <laughs> but I stopped drinking soda. So from my junior year to my senior year, I had actually dropped about 40 pounds. Interesting. Um, but it wasn't that noticeable, um, and a lot of people didn't see it. I could see it, but a lot of people really didn't notice. And it wasn't until right after high school, after I graduated, um, that I continued taking these classes. And, of course, I developed a wonderful relationship with Kelly, Joe, and we became really good friends. And to this day, we're very, very good friends and a very important person in my life and she was going on vacation to go see her mom in Flagstaff, Arizona. Um, She was a school teacher and she was going to be gone for spring break and she came up to me and she said, hey, I'm going to go out of town and you're the only one that can teach at this level or um, which was an advanced class and I said, teach? What are you talking about? I don't know how to teach. I I just follow you, you know? And she said, no, Q, you, you have this charisma about you you could do it. And I said, I don't think so. You're so crazy. And she was like, look how much weight you've lost, you know. And she's seen how much drive and dedication I had. And I said, no, I, I couldn't. I was scared. I had stage fright. I was very shy. And she said, no, I think you can do it. And I'm going to work with you. And I'm going to show you the the, the the basics and, how you know, all the stuff behind the scenes, I guess, of how to be a group X instructor. Oh, wow. And she did just that. She 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 brought me the book. Um, she brought me she would we'd go in um, on a on a Saturday or a Sunday when nobody was in the gym and we'd work on learning thirty two eight count you know, the thirty two counts and what eight counts all of this stuff which I knew a little bit of because I played orchestra so I knew about beats and stuff like that. So it was easy, easy for me to pick stuff up like that. Wow. Super easy. The, where the complexity began was knowing why you were doing an exercise for what reason and mm-hmm. the form and the technique and, you know, learning the muscles and the bones and, you know, a lot of stuff that you wouldn't even think about. Um, and then learning how to build choreography from something basic into this amazing routine that she would always do. Um, and so I started off uh, teaching her abs class, and I was so nervous. I thought, oh, if we're laying on our back, I can't mess up too bad. We're not standing. <laughs> I can't build too much. Um, interesting enough, so fast forwarding, uh, I covered for her, and I actually did it for free. I, I didn't get paid. I just did it because I-, I wanted to do it, and it made me feel good. And you loved it. And I loved, you it. loved it. At that point, it was just about me, you know? I, I just loved it, and... 
Seems like everybody needs a Kelly Joe in their life. Yeah, you know, she Kelly was Joe. that one person that helped keep the fire lit. Mm. But truthfully, I've learned during the process um, because I ended up losing 130 pounds. Wow. Um, and it took me, you know, I was in the gym morning, noon, and night. And I didn't know there was also a nutrition side to it. I do now. And I would have done things a lot differently. All I knew was what was making me lose weight, and I continued doing it. And now I wish I would have known all the science that we know now <laughs> and how our body um, processes different foods and carbs. And, you know, it's 80% of what we put in our mouth, 10% diet and 10% Genetics, And when I say diet, I don't mean everybody says we're going to diet. No, diet means just the food that you eat, the diet, your, your food intake. Mm -hmm. it's, people misconstrue the word diet. They really do. Okay. Um, but I wish I would have known now. I wish I would have known then what I know now. I would have done things differently because I worked so hard. I mean, I pushed myself to the limits. Um, and I would always make myself go an extra 30 minutes, an extra an hour, and I just kept on and kept on and kept on, because that's all I knew. What were some of the exercises that you were doing? Um, sure, so I started off, so I was taking these these kickboxing classes, okay. and then I was help teaching here and there, okay. an abs class, step class, you name it. Any type of class Kelly Joe taught, I was up in that sucker. <laughs> um, I, I didn't care what it was, high, low, I, I just loved it all. It made me feel like I was dancing again. But then I would go in on my own, and I would stay at first elliptical, and I would be on the elliptical. I, I started off at like 30 minutes, and then it went to an hour, and then it was two hours, then it was three hours, and I thought, man, this is so ridiculous wow. that I'm on this machine for so long. It was to the point where like my feet would go numb and get tingly, and I'd just keep going because I knew eventually the numbing sensation would go away. Wow. How crazy is that? That I pushed myself to that. You really pushed yourself. And then I would go to the treadmill, mm -hmm. and I started with, I could barely jog a quarter of a mile, and I'd be out of breath. And then I got to a half a mile, and then three-fourths, and then I got to a full mile. Come and pretty on soon, I was jogging five miles every day faithfully whether it was outside or on a treadmill. And if I didn't get it in, I, I don't care how tired I was, I was getting it in. It didn't matter what was going on in my life. Everything got pushed aside um, because it was so important to me and it's all I knew of how to keep this weight off and to continue to lose weight. And it's sad in one aspect because I feel like I missed out on some opportunities that I could have spent with my grandparents. Mm. Um, some opportunities I could have spent with my younger siblings. Yeah. Some opportunities just having regular fun with your friends with birthdays and stuff that I missed because I was in the gym. Um, so I wish I would have known, you know, what I know now. Sure. I can't say that enough because it's so true. They always say hindsight is twenty twenty. Yeah. Hmm. So what responses were you getting from onlookers or from your family as you started to shed this weight? <laughs> you know what's interesting you when you see somebody day in and day out mm -hmm. you don't notice the changes unless it's something drastic like a haircut or a hair color or you know something implants you know something <laughs> drastic you mean like these yeah okay yeah something drastic you know you you don't notice your the people you see day in and day out small changes like that which is you know i was losing three to four pounds a week you're not going to notice a change gotcha. you know when you see them day in and day out right so the people in the gym really didn't say nothing until i probably lost a good 40 50 pounds and that's when they're like wow good for you you know and they would pat me on the back and Man, you know, and I would see people trying to keep up with me on the elliptical, which made me feel good. Um, but my father, I lived with him at the time. We lived in a two-bedroom, one-bath apartment. Um, and we, you know, I helped him. We tried to, I tried to help him with the bills. I was still, um, I was in college, too. I was getting ready to go to college, but I guess I was just working full-time. So I was helping with the bills. Um, and he called me my brother's name. And my older brother... Um, has all was always fit and trim and tall, 
And he was like, wait a minute. Because he didn't, he didn't notice it. I lived with him, so he didn't see it day in and day out. Uh-huh. And it wasn't after I dropped probably 85 pounds before my father was like, oh, my God, what happened? And I lived with him. He called you by your brother's he name. He called me by my brother's name. I bet that was one of the biggest compliments to you in in a way yeah it, it was it was like my dad noticed he noticed and i was sad at first because he hadn't said nothing you know and i it wasn't nothing i would brag about um because i was embarrassed that i had gotten that big mm-hmm. so i didn't want to draw any attention to it um so yeah it was you know it, it was rewarding to hear my dad say that wow. um and then i continued to to push and so I was reaching my goals and I always set realistic goals, you know. It was never I want to drop a hundred pounds, seventy-five pounds, twenty-five pounds. Those are unrealistic goals that a lot of people I feel set for themselves and they set themselves up for failure. Me was always I always was like, oh Q, just do two pounds this week. That was my goal. You know, uh, man, I'm in a size forty. What is thirty-eight gonna look like on me? Not that that was my goal to be in the 38, but I just wanted to see what a 38 would look on me. And Oh, man, what would a 36 look on me? What would a 34 look on me? What would a 32 look on me? Yes. I'm like, what would a 30? A 30? I'm 6'2". I shouldn't have a 30-inch waist. Wow. But, you know, it's weird. All of a sudden, it's like reverse psychology on myself. Mm. So now... I developed what they call as body dysmorphia. What's that? So body dysmorphia is a disease that someone has when they view themselves a certain way or their body a certain way, but it's not whatever the people see. Mm-hmm. So I had lost all of this weight. I was now in a size 31 was my smallest waist size I was able to get down to. Wow. Um, but I still saw quitting at 300 pounds and a 44 inch waist and it plays a lot of mind games with you i couldn't even walk past a car without see looking at my reflection to see if my stomach was poking over to see if i had a roll in the back wow i became so self-conscious about the way clothes fit on me the way i looked i was constantly looking in the mirror constantly looking at my shadow constantly sucking in my stomach horrible horrible space to be in because it can damage you and you can go from one spectrum which I would consider obese and unfit to the other spectrum of being anorexic right? or maybe even bulimic unhealthy because you're still seeing this other person horrible horrible disease and it takes counseling to get over it and it's not something you get over i mean to this day i still struggle with my body image but not as much as i did i am comfortable with who i am and i you know there's always areas of of opportunity with anybody and the the human body is an amazing things and i've done some amazing things i've been fit i've been trim i've been anorexic i've been obese and i feel like i've been in so many shoes i i really feel that i part of me and my personality and why people get me is because I can relate to them and I give them that sense that I can relate to them. Yes. And I don't judge anybody. Yes. And going back to your original question, it was weird seeing people I had went to high school with when they would come home for the summers because they were off in college. But that wasn't my goal at the time. I went to college later on, but my goal at the time was to lose this weight. So I stayed in my hometown and to see them come home for Thanksgiving or Christmas to see their families and I'd go out with Kelly Joe dancing. I wouldn't even drink. I was worried about burning calories. We'd be like, how many calories we burn tonight? We were out there dancing and sweating. Um, To see them do double takes, triple takes, Uh like, is that? No. No. It felt good. Yeah. But to have people that didn't talk to me in high school or treated me a certain way in high school come on now 
now all of a sudden they they want to talk to me interesting now all of a sudden i'm somebody Hmm. now all of a sudden you recognize me Hmm. guess what at the end of the day had you have gotten to know me and not see me for my weight i'm the same person and i think that was the biggest shock and i didn't i never knew how mean as a society are to big people it's like we treat them like they don't have feelings it's horrible horrible we'll be right back Are you interested in being a sponsor or underwriter for this amazing show? Then call 719-299-0879. That's 719-299-0879 and ask for Jay. He asked me a question. This is John Redman and you are listening to JBCM Radio inspiring you to embrace your creativity. Check out my music at reachingrecords.com. That's www.reachingrecords.com. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I am John Redman here at Matters of the Heart, and with me is my boy, your boy, the national Mr. Quentin Clark. He is like the, the, the most electrifying fitness instructor I've ever, ever um, seen, and just just to watch him. Now, I, don't, I can't hang in his classes. Sometimes when he's doing his... um. He's doing his um, dance classes and everybody's in rhythm. It looks like I'm just like killing cockroaches while everybody else is in in rhythm. He's trying to hold back a laugh. You can go and laugh. I'm sure he shows his shows videos of me and be like, "Yo, look at John." I don't know what he think he's doing, but um, I know it. I know. I know how you are. But anyway, <laughs> Quentin is here giving us his his story of 300 to two, and he's telling us about his journey about losing all this weight um he's been obese he's been fit he said he's been anorexic and 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 the and the circumstances that surrounded you know him actually going on and um and and the steps that he actually took to lose the weight and i hope you all are really really listening and staying tuned to like every word he said, especially if you're struggling with weight or especially if you're struggling with anything, um, he's giving you, he's just like a beacon of hope and inspiration and a light. And I think that's one of the things, one of the many things that excites people about you because when you're, when you're teaching or when you're actually, you know, um, um, training, you're actually, you're, you're encouraging us as well. Well, you know, whether we're like me offbeat or whether you see us, you know, whether we're, we're looking at ourselves as obese, you're not looking at us that way. How are you as an instructor looking at someone who, is, who walks in your class and, and, is, and is overweight and you know we can't even give you a, a eye contact because we feel like we're out of place? How do you make us feel apart? Um, you know, that's, that's a good question. Um, it, as crazy as it may sound, I don't look at people as obese to this day. I, 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 when I look at somebody, somebody I've, I've never met before, I, 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 I look at their body language. Mm-hmm. I look at, you know, are they an outgoing person? Do they look timid? And I really try to zone in on that person's personality just by 
their body language. Body language says a million things to me, and you can understand and read so much by people's body language, you know. And I, I try to zone in on that, so that way I know how to treat that person. Because you should not treat people how you want to be treated. You should treat people how they would want to be treated. That's right. That's right. And I, I just think that's the one thing that's allowed me to be so fortunate and so blessed and and to be as successful as I have been um, with what I do and, and where I've been. And all of this is because of that. Because, one, I, I am crazy. I am fun. I'm full of life. And I try to find that in everybody else, but in their way. To go. help bring them out, what's you know, and I if somebody's got a brand new pair of shoes. I don't think that I'm not gonna be like, dang, I see them sneakers. You know, <laughs> just the other day, this lady walked into my class and she had the bomb, bomb shades. I was like, dang, I was like, don't even be over there with your stunning shades on on the trip. Stop it, <laughs> stop it. Like, yes, you know, I love that stuff. I I love people that yes. love them and feel fabulous. You can be fabulous at 20, you know. 200 pounds, 300 pounds, you can be fabulous at two pounds. Truthfully, if you feel fabulous, you're going to push that off, that that ray of light, that ray of that energy, aura, yes, that aura. Yes, yes absolutely. Yes. People are going to see it. And when you feel good about yourself, you look at things as the glass being half full and that half empty. You're done playing the victim. You're done um, moping around. You're done having a pity party. You're done, oh, my life is that. No, no, no. Thank you because this is what I'm going to do. You know, yes. and, it, and it, it, it's a lifestyle change. It's not just a, an increment for six weeks to look at. No, no. You know, when what I did when I set out years and years ago, I guess decades coming, my goodness. It was a lifestyle, and I've made it a lifestyle, and, and you just become such a better person when you start feeling good about you. It has to start with the inner you. Yes. It has to. All the baggage that we all hold on to. Now, don't get me wrong. I, I, I still got my baggage to this day. I still have drama in my life to this day. But I don't hold on to stuff like I used to hold on to stuff. That's beautiful. I don't let stuff affect me the way I, I used to let it affect me. I keep pushing and I'm going to continue to be me. Continue to, to help others see themselves, which I think is huge. Because somebody took that opportunity, Kelly Jo. <laughs> yeah. She saw that in me and yeah. let me know about it and I ran with it. We ran. So why would I not give that same gift that's like, oh my gosh, you didn't see this about yourself? You didn't see that I noticed you over there being fabulous? Get out of here. What a and even, you know, buff masculine men that come in and, you know, and, and they're so worried about presenting themselves in a masculine way. Don't think I didn't see you over there with them guns? Yes, give me life, you know, do another one. Shoot. <laughs> Ten more reps. Right? <laughs> you know... Everybody loves to hear compliments. While we might not all perceive them as compliments or take them as com or even know how to respond. I For years, yes. you could not give me a compliment because I didn't know how to respond to it. You couldn't receive it. Yeah. I couldn't receive it. Because you didn't see it yourself. So right. Therefore... It was hard to be like, what do I say? Mm. But people love, love the feeling of love. I don't care... Who you are, what you are, what race you are, it doesn't matter. When you feel wanted, you feel loved, you feel special, you, you feel recognized, you feel, you know, it all helps you bring this positive energy to, to, to be yourself and to see you in this light and, and spark that, 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 that motivation, that, that, that extra push that you need for whatever may be going on in your life. Because here's the thing. I see so many faces, so many, so many different types of people, mm -hmm. day in and day out right. in my life and my profession and what I do. You cannot judge a book by its cover. No, you cannot. We could be at the most prestigious gym in town, and I guarantee you, somebody's struggling financially. I can guarantee you, you're going to see the same thing at the, the cheapest gym. I guarantee you're going to see somebody having the time of their life. You're going to see somebody stressed out with weight, stressed out with their job, stressed out with their kids, stressed out with this, stressed out with their spouse. Right. 
stressed out with themselves. Shoot, right. I think we cause ourselves stress. It's real talk. <laughs> you know? And if I can just get them to see what I see in them and light that fire in them for just even that hour. That's good. I can guarantee you their day's going to be a lot better. They're, they're going to see the light at the end of that tunnel. Okay, so side note. I have a very, very, very close friend who's over 40, and he's struggling with man boobs. What, what, what advice would you give him to actually get rid of those? And I'm writing them down just to give back to him. I think it's so hilarious that you said side note and went to man boobs. Yes. <laughs> um, I'll tell you uh, my advice to them, um, being somebody who has lost a bunch of weight and kept it off for a very long time. Yes. Um, you cannot isolate. You can't isolate one thing. Mm. Um, when I was losing my weight, I was like, oh my gosh, I just want these thighs to go down. I just want this to go down. I just want that to go down. I want my cheeks. You can isolate. Mm. You can do exercises to isolate your muscles. Absolutely. You cannot isolate one spot to lose weight. You can't. The body, the human body, you know, the, my advice to them would be to study how the human body operates, to go have a test done that will show them how their body processes food, mm. show them do heart rate based strength conditioning. Because if you burn, you know, if you're burning too much, you're going to be burning your muscle, not sugar, which is what you need. So your heart rate must stay in a certain zone. There's so much that goes wow. into it. I would give them all of the knowledge that I know. To help them achieve a weight loss, not in particular area. I see. So what you're telling me is just going to the gym and get these tests done because that man with the man boobs is me. Okay, so (laughs) so thank you so much for that. I have to go on and get some tests done. I hear you. All right. So cute. Um, Going back and I thank you so much for being here. Tell me, like, how many gyms do you actually currently work at i mean we we see your facebook posts those who are his friends we see your facebook posts all over you're everywhere like you're like at so many gyms how many gyms do you actually teach at or work at or facilities do you actually instruct at several um (laughs) several facilities because it's not just gyms that i work at Mm. um I work at um, corporations who have gyms on site oh. or um, for their employees or they're not even gyms on site. It could be a closet in, in the hallway that that's, you know, that the the janitor room I, I've taught in there before, you know? What? Yeah, you know, you don't have to have a gym to exercise. That is a um, great word right there. You do not have to have a gym to exercise. You don't. There's so many things out there. I mean, you could even YouTube them for different exercise that you can just use your own body weight to get a workout. And you could do in your garage or in your bedroom or while you're on vacation in the hotel room or while you're at your your desk working, mm-hmm. you know, um, walking to your printer, putting your printer across the room. Versus right here by your desk. You, that's exercise. There's so many little things that you can do. And critique what you're currently doing. If there's time issues. Um, but back to your question. I, I Several. I, I, I've never counted them. Um, but probably. Uh, without naming names. Um, and promoting. Probably about nine different ones. Wow. Yeah. I, I do a lot of driving. Um. About 620 miles to 650 miles Monday through Friday. What? Yeah. 600 miles? Yeah. It's a Back lot. Back and forth. Oh, my goodness. I know, right? So, I, I clearly, I hate driving. Imagine right. Imagine that. <laughs> but I, I, would too. I just, I don't understand why my friends don't get why Q don't ever want to drive. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> Q is driving out. My car, the wheels are about to fall off. Shoot, I mean, no, not really. I, I take care of my tires. But you know, I mean, those are some miles. Man. All right, all right, you guys. When we come back, Q is going to take us down an incredible path that propels him to the city of Minneapolis, Minnesota. You won't want to miss this when we come back. 
Hello everyone, I'm Amira Griffin. You're listening to JBCM Radio. You can learn more about us at jbcmradio.com. We are here to inspire you to embrace your creativity. And we are back. Thank you guys so much for um, staying tuned in with us. I am John Redman, and I'm here with with our boy, um, Mr. Fitness himself, Quentin Clark. Thank you so much for being here, Quentin, and sharing your incredible story and your incredible journey with us. So let's talk about this thrilling and noteworthy experience you just recently had and how it all transpired. You know, um, over the years, clearly I've been able, I've been fortunate enough um, to take different formats and, and learn different formats and continuing my education, mm-hmm. um, which I love, love doing. I love learning new things about the body and learning new movements and new routines. I just love, love it. You can never get enough of it. It's almost like I'm obsessed with this. It. really crazy. You wow. should see me. And luckily, I live in a house now, so I can do it in the basement. Back when I had apartments, so I'm sure the neighbor's like, what? And uh, Here we go. Right? Here we go again. Who knows what they thought I was doing up there? <laughs> <laughs> He's getting it in. Um, You know, I've been fortunate enough to take different trainings and learn different formats and teach different formats throughout my my career. Mm -hmm. Um, And I was fortunate enough that I was nominated to go compete um, for a specialized format. Um, And I actually won... um, the regional division. I was came in first place, which yes. to me, I was not going there to win. I wasn't going there to prove anything to anybody. That's right. I went in there. I was just my crazy wild self. Um, I was my fun self, and I was having fun. Yes. And I walked away with the crown. It was. I was. I was at a, I'm still at a loss for words. It was just an amazing feeling because it was in a city that I didn't know anybody. Yes. Um, I didn't have my so-called, what people call my groupies. I, it's not my groupies. Just the, the members that take my classes at the yeah, different facilities. They are groupies. They're not groupies. They're groupies. Um, <laughs> I, I had me. Yes. And I was still myself. I didn't sell myself. Sure, I didn't pr- portray to be anybody I wasn't. I was just cute. You were just being cute. And I won. So I got the opportunity to go to Minneapolis, Minnesota, and compete against all the other regional winners around the the nation, around the United States. Yes. Um, I met some phenomenal talent, talented, phenomenal caring, nurturing, loving, amazing people during that trip. Tell us about that. Oh, you know, it was like we all instantly knew each other and clicked. It was the weirdest thing. And we just all embraced each other with love, which you don't see this day. There's people full of hate and drama and, and their, you know, their views you just don't see that these days. You all embraced each other in a competitive setting. You in all are all setting. regional winners. And, and you all came together and other. going against each other. Yet y'all came together? together. We did. No way. I, I, you know, I, I promise that I, 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 I couldn't even make this up if I wanted to. Because right. who would believe it, right? Right. So luckily, they could, they could speak to it for themselves. Mm. Um, and they did. Um, and you know... It was just this, the hairs on the back of my neck stood up with all the love that we all gave each other. And I thought, you know, I'm not the only one that does that. I wasn't there competing. Mm. I was there having a good time with my peers. Yes, you were. And that's what we did. Yeah. And you know, an amazing thing that one of them did, um, I believe there were nine of us total. Okay. Um, right before we got ready to start, um, it was another guy. There was two guys, myself and another one, and the rest were females. So the other guy mm-hmm. said, hey, guys, do you mind um, if I, even if you're not religious, if I just kind of say a prayer for us to give us the strength and the courage and the energy to, to compete against oh, each other? Wow. 
And we were like, yeah, nobody had a problem with it. And we all huddled around each other. And he led us in prayer. And what's interesting is that somebody, I don't know who, snapped a photo of us doing that. And they thought it got back to us, at least. This is what I'm hearing. You know, he said, she said kind of thing. Mm -hmm. It got back to us that they thought we were just all over there being goofballs and, you know, pumping each other like, yeah, come on, man, you got this, you know, and yeah, yeah, like yeah, a football team. Yeah, like a football team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it wasn't. And what's amazing wow. is I took that picture and I posted it as my profile picture. Yes. But that picture means so much more to me than the per anybody seeing it. I'll, anybody seeing it just sees a group of people huddled around. Huddled around. Yeah. That's if so they cool. only knew the words of encouragement and love and support that was being said and then take a step back the different races the different cultures the different sexes yes and we were just one wow just one we didn't rehearse anything nobody said we're gonna do this or do that we just knew what order we were going in and that was it and do you know that when it got time and it was the, the music hit the the, it, the spotlight was on I guess right, right we all as tired as we were as hard as we were working supported each other while each person was teaching without even nobody said we had to do it nobody said oh let's do this or let's do there was no plan just came it naturally. just again naturally mm. naturally and you know I, I, it was wow. breathtaking and, and I had to take a step back in the moment why it was going on. I'm like, look at this. Look at the opportunity that God is putting into my life yes. only because I want to share the love and the energy and the, the excitement and the passion and the drive that somebody showed me. Yes. And he continues to do these things. It was the... I mean, the best feeling, the best feeling to be with the best of the best of the best and have the people who we as instructors and as presenters look up to and have looked up to. And they've set the bar and the tone, you know, like the the Mariah Carey's and the the Nita Baker's and the Stevie Wonders of the music world. Well, all of those people were there in the fitness industry, like watching us and being those judges wow having that opportunity what an opportunity oh man oh man wow so let me tell you something Mm. i i I was done that was that was the reward that was the reward i was the champion wow and i got to share that with everybody else it wasn't about look at me right it was about us and I happened to walk away with second place. You made second place. Second place. How in the world can we not be so proud of you? For first, um, we're sitting here in Colorado. So co- thank you, Q, for putting us on the map again. <laughs> um, and, and, and all I can say is that one word, incredible. And this is the reason why we chose the title from 300 to 2. You used to weigh 300 pounds, a 44-inch waist. And fast forward, you're taking number two at national, a national competition. In a fitness competition. In a fitness competition. <laughs> if somebody would have told I you, know. Q, if somebody would have told you yeah. back then, just hang in there, buddy, when you are 300 pounds because you're going to take second place in a national comp fitness competition. What would you have told them? Lies. Lies. <laughs> are you kidding me? Lies. 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 That's what I would have told them. Lies. Now, if you, you know, if you were talking about a twerking session, like, let's, <laughs> let, I mean, you know, I was winning booty dance contests back in the day, but that big old, I mean, I have me some pound cakes, honey. Yes. I mean, I, you know, but a fitness competition for when I was 300 pounds, the mm. press, which I didn't know I was depressed. Mm. Um, you know, a person who had had a lot of trauma as a kid in their life. Yes. I, I, you know, I, I wouldn't have believed you. Mm. 
lies is what I would have told you and told you you were full of it. Q, so for those people who are just tuning in and just listening to you and they're laughing with you, they're crying with you, they're rejoicing with you, or somebody who doesn't even know you um, and they are listening and they right now are struggling with their weight, they're eating excessively or they're obese or they're unhealthy and they want to do better for themselves, but they just don't feel that they, that they can. What words of wisdom or counsel would you give to them? They're listening. They're intently they're, they, they They might have a Twinkie in their mouth right now and they're passing a gym or they're or they're they're passing a Dunkin Donuts. And they're like, you know what? Mm -mm. They said I ain't going to never amount to nothing. No how. And I don't believe in myself. So why would I even try? What would you tell them? You know, I, I've never thought of that. Hmm. So thanks for putting me on the spot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Real. Um, first of all, it, it wouldn't be just for the obese people. Unhealthy can be anorexic. It's real talk. Unhealthy can be when you're fit, but mentally you're a mess. Wow. So unhealthy is more than just obese. It's true. And you can be struggling with more than just your weight. Um, I would tell them one you know I used to always hear people say well if I can do it you can do it and I thought yeah right you don't know what it is you're not me you don't have this you don't have that but honestly I used to, I used to be that person that was no that it, it, it couldn't be me you know mm -hmm. and I now that I've done it now that I've been so many things now that I understand myself now that I know who I am I have accepted me. I have accepted everything about me. Um, I, I would say one, you have got to figure out who you are, what you want, and do you love yourself before you make any other moves. Because if your mind is not right, you're not healthy. And whatever it is that you're trying to do, and I'm hoping that it's for you and not somebody else. Wow. You're doing it for the wrong reason. Wow. And that, that you know, I, I can't say, you know, hey in there, you got this, keep doing what you're doing, because I don't know what you're doing. And I'm not going to tell you to keep doing what you're doing. And it could be the wrong thing. It could be an unhealthy thing. Right. It could be impacting other people's lives and you don't realize it. Right. I would say, do you love you? Where's your mind at? Mm. What have you done to make your mind right? What have you done to eat at those battles or look at those situations or talk about those taboo conversations? What have you done? What are you doing? What do you want to continue to do? What is your goals? What is your objective? Look at the bigger picture. Don't target just a, a, a weight thing. Don't target just a, a, a size thing. Do you I know a little too deep for me because, you know, I'm not a person to be all up in my feelings. But it's that's that's what I would tell them. But you know what? That That's how humans are. That's how we operate. Mm -hmm. That's how we deal with stuff. Yeah. We're cycles. It's true. And clearly, I, maybe I have some ADD. I'm all over the place. Don't See? Don't, <laughs> don't, don't, don't. <laughs> I don't know you. We ain't claiming that. Oh, man. But if I did, I'd own it. You right. know, because that's who I am. Right. And I'm telling you. Once I embraced who Q was, yes. look at what what I've been given the opportunity to share with others. You know, something you just said just really spoke to me personally. And I hope our, our listening audience actually grasped that and gleaned that. You said, um, whatever you're doing, make sure you're doing it for you. Mm -hmm. And you're not doing it for someone else. And make sure that the basis of what you're doing, what you're doing for yourself is because you love yourself. And I think you just hit the nail on the target for so many of us because so many of us are trying our best to put ourselves in this box so people can accept us. I know if I'm 30 pounds 
lighter. I'll get that job or I'll get my husband or my wife to love me or look at me again or, or, or get that affection again or, or, stop teasing. or stop teasing me. Yes. I know that if I do this for someone else, then I will be um, um, positively affected. You all just heard him and that, well, that spoke volumes to me. Make sure whatever you're doing, the intentions are the right intentions, meaning your intentions, meaning you're doing it out of self love because you love yourself. That's why you're going to do this. And as long as that is your inspiration, as long as, oh, I'm doing this because I want to get healthy, whether whatever healthy is for you. And like he said, he set his own goal. You know, I'm just do, do two pounds, you know, or I'm just going to change up the things I eat or what I do. That was his goal, not anyone else's goal for him. And so Q, I just really want to really, really just thank you so much for being so open and vulnerable with us today. You know, you're welcome, and thank you for inviting me. And I'll tell you, it wasn't that it, it's easy for me now, mm. but after I had lost all the weight, it was not easy. I, I used to be so embarrassed of the fact that I was big, I would not share with anybody. Wow. So I hope that if there's anything that somebody might have heard or they're ashamed of, I can guarantee you if somebody else is going through it or has gone through it, and it's nothing to be ashamed of because it's who you are. Well, I'm praying right now that, and I'm hoping that someone who tuned in that can take your story in and use it as an inspiration for themselves and share it with others to inspire them as well. And you all really, um, don't forget to tune in with us next Sunday at the same time. Remember, if it matters to you, it truly does matter to us. This is Matters of the Heart. I am your host, John Redman. Stay blessed. I only have this one song. I only have this one dance. I only have this one try. I only have this one chance to be the best that I can be. Giving you the greatest part of me. I only have this one, 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 one song. Take a bow.